welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Sipsey, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. We got a little bit of a chilly fall day here in New Jersey, so I had to break out my fleece. But here we go again. We're on our next Breeders' Cup preview show. Absolutely, Matt. And I'm loving this cooler fall weather we're having here in Kentucky as well. That means Breeders' Cup fall, Breeders' Cup. They go together, Matt, very well. And uh, yeah, we're going to continue our Breeders' Cup shows here on Horse Center with, uh, we're going turf, Matt. We're going to the green. We're going to the grass. We both love betting grass races, handicapping grass races. So here we go. We're going to do the three biggest grass races of the Breeders' Cup today, the Breeders' Cup turf, the Breeders' Cup mile. And of course, the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf. Now, there's a lot of Europeans, international horses, not just Europeans, coming over for the Breeders' Cup. Matt and I have a pretty good feel of who's going to be in and who's going to be not, uh, who's not going to be coming over. So we're going to go with what we think now. That could always change a little bit in the next couple of weeks, but we'll do that. And Matt, when we're talking Breeders' Cup Turf, I think we have to start with the international crew. And when we're talking internationals in the Breeders' Cup turf, we better start with that great race mare, Tarnawa, who, of course, won this race last year. Yeah, we certainly have to start with the Europeans in the BC turf, because if you take a look back, the Euros have won five of the last six runnings of the Breeders' Cup turf. So you, you've got to you know, take them very, very seriously, regardless of what their uh, latest race looks like. And of course, I think it was only only bricks and mortar that popped in the midst of those six uh, uh, wins, but races at, with the Europeans winning five of them. And you mentioned Tarnawa uh, won the race uh, last year impressively. And, and she's coming into uh, the Breeders' Cup in pretty good form, uh, BZ, second last time uh, in the Arc de Triomphe um, on, a tur on a soft turf course. Uh, didn't get the best of trips racing along uh, on the inside. And before that, she was second in the champion stakes, a group one at Leopardstown. You know, we're, we're talking about in those races, running against the very, very best horses in Europe and, and historically horses that have not won the arc, run second, third, run well in the arc, have done very well in the Breeders' Cup. Yeah, that's true. Uh, arc, arc runners up or horses that were uh, reasonably, uh, did reasonably well in the arc have done well in the Breeders' Cup turf. Tarnawa though, um, yeah, I mean, she, she deserves to be the favorite. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Last year, I think she was close to five to one when she won. Uh, the Dermot well-trained uh, daughter of Shamadal has, uh, has been really good this year. You look at her record since that big Breeders' Cup win last fall at Keeneland, and you say, well, she's only one of three. But as Matt alluded to, she won her first start of the year nicely, and uh, she ran two really big races in both the Irish champions and then the, uh, the big one, the Arc, over at Longchamp. So she's coming off a, a couple of second-place finishes where she absolutely ran huge a repeat of those performances, a repeat of the Breeders' Cup turf performance last year at Keeneland, and she'll be awfully tough to beat. Uh, she's just an excellent mare, obviously likes the mile and a half distance of the Breeders' Cup, and I consider her the one to beat in this year's Breeders' Cup. Another mare, Matt, that we need to talk about, though, is Love, because Love is a five-time Group 1 winner. Let me say that again, a five-time Group 1 winner over in Europe. Love is a serious mare, a daughter of Galileo, trained by the ubiquitous Aiden O'Brien, Matt. Aiden O'Brien always comes over here with a lot of runners. He'll be coming over with a bunch again this year. Love is awfully good, just like Tarnawa, though. She's coming off a bit of a losing streak, but I think she's still running very good races. She's very familiar running with the boys. And as a five-time Group 1 winner in Europe, I think we have to give a lot of consideration. This is our second female as we start the Breeders' Cup Turf con uh, conversation. Yeah, and we know we know certainly from uh, following European racing. No matter how much you fans follow European racing, you know that uh, Phillies mares running against the boys in Europe is it, it, that that that's pretty common. So uh, 
uh, we're, we are not really concerned about that. And, and as you mentioned, uh, uh, Love is another one of those quality horses, just hasn't found the winner circle in her last few races, but they have been against the best uh, uh, horses again, like we said about Tarnow. She was beginning pointed to the arc by Aiden O'Brien, but she came up with a little bit of a, a sickness, a little bit of a fever uh, before, so they skipped the arc and hopefully will be uh, ready and in top form to come over here uh, to the Breeders' Cup. A second at the Kerr, a third in the Judmont International, a big group one, a third in another big group one, the King and Queen uh, at Ascot. Those are all noteworthy performances that stack up very well with uh, any Americans in this race. Yeah, and she beat the boys to start the year, and she she collected group ones uh, uh, in a streak last year, of course. So that daughter, Galileo, it has a big shot in here. And folks, again, Tarnawa and Love, uh, you know, they're certainly eligible for the Philly and Mare turf, but we're projecting that Tarnawa and Love will go to the big one, the Breeders' Cup turf, the $4 million Breeders' Cup turf, which is double the money of the Philly and Mare turf. We talked mares. Let's talk three-year-olds, Matt, because I think there's a couple of big uh, three-year-olds coming over that we expect to come over from Europe as well. Big shots. Uh, Seal Away um, has been running in France lately, and uh, those races, I think, point him out as a three-year-old who's not only getting better, uh, but uh, very familiar with running against top horses. Seal Away was second in the French Derby, two, two starts back to St. Mark's Basilica. And uh, after that, he came back and ran a good race in the arc. I guess he was fifth in that big field, but uh, still a strong performance there from Seal Away. Yeah, absolutely. Fifth in that, in that arc. I mean, it was a pretty contentious finish. Uh, um, in the arc. So that is noteworthy. And you mentioned that second at Chantilly. Um, earlier in the year, she was a winner of the grade one champion stakes at Ascot. So again, anytime you get one of those group one victories in there, uh, in the resume of these Europeans, you know, they're good. Yeah. And Silaway is familiar with American racing, just like Tarnawa. He came over last year uh, didn't have the best of trips behind fire at will in the in the Breeders' Cup Turf Juvenile, uh, but still was uh, not beaten by all that much in that juvenile. Shows he can handle American style racing. Another three-year-old that I think we need to talk about, Matt, is Ibar. Ibar is the son of Dubawi, uh, a Go Dolphin runner trained by Charles A Charles Appleby, and we know how well Appleby has done both overseas this year as well as bringing horses over to America and winning. And Ibar is one of those horses, Matt. I thought he looked really, really good winning at Belmont last time in the Jockey Club Derby. Yeah, and uh, I don't know. It, it, it may be hard to say that, but Charlie Appleby is winning the big races in Europe and, and doing especially well shipping horses over to the U.S., uh, uh, certainly uh, poking at Aiden O'Brien as the, the top trainer this year. He really... Uh, is doing well. You mentioned that win at Belmont Park uh, in the Jockey Club Derby recently. Before that, uh, he had a Group 2 victory at York. So uh, like many of Appleby's runners, this one is in fine form. And three-year-old Phillies against older, it doesn't make a difference with the Europeans. Yeah, I, Ibar, uh, he looked good in his last win uh, over in uh, in Europe, winning the great, uh, great Voltager. And then, uh, of course, in the uh, Jockey Club Derby at Belmont, he, uh, he just swooped the field. He was last early, last on the turn, in fact, and he just went by the rest. A pretty good field of three-year-olds at Belmont Park in that rich race very, very easily. So I think Ibar is another one with a big shot. Okay, European, 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 Matt. How about we talk about some Americans? You know Gufo will be my long shot after uh, uh, moving prematurely in the Turf Classic. But of course, I think that the, the main American, the biggest threat in the Breeders' Cup Turf will be domestic spending, Matt. I've just forgotten a little bit about him because we just haven't seen him very much this year. Yeah, uh, certainly the best older American turf horse going a, going a distance of ground this year. You mentioned we haven't seen him since, I guess it was August, Brian, um, at Arlington Park and what we still 
what you and I will still call the uh, Arlington Million, where he finished second. Uh, it was a, a second where he was so against the pace of that horse got loose on the lead it, uh, and was able to set really slow fractions and, and just couldn't close enough to get the win. But before that, um, uh, grade one victories after grade one victories for the Chad Brown want runner and, and Chad Brown has done great things in the Breeders' Cup uh, uh, as a young trainer with 15 Breeders' Cup wins, 14 of them coming uh, in uh, grass races. I don't know, Brian, I hate to say it, I, I think the Americans are really up against it if a number of those Euros that we mentioned come over to run in this uh, race. Domestic spending has never gone the mile and a half distance of the turf. Right. And, and I really don't fact, uh, like the fact that he's only had three starts this year. I, I understand Chad Brown is trying to do what's best for the horse and, and space out his races, but it, it's tough when probably the best dirt, uh, turf horse in America is only running for the fourth time and probably will only run four times. I, I disagree with you a little bit. I mean, it, you know, if, if, if you put a gun to my head and said, who's going to win the turf, the Europeans or the Americans, I would probably side with the Europeans here. But I do think the Americans uh, in domestic spending and maybe Gufo or one or two others have a, have a real shot. And domestic spending is a horse who reminds me a little bit of bricks and mortar. Bricks and mortar hadn't been a mile and a half yet, but Chad Brown had him ready. And, you know, you look at domestic spending's record, uh, six wins and a second and a third out of eight lifetime starts. He had that nice winning streak broken in the, uh, the Mr. D, the Arlington million, as you say, but I don't mind that race. It, like you said, it was, it was just a, a, a dawdling pace that he had to try to run down a loose on the lead. Uh, uh, leader in there. So not a bad race. I, I guess I could call it a prep, even though it's nearly what, uh, three months out, but uh, spreading out his races, I, I think domestic spending is a real threat and, and one of the main threats in the Breeders' Cup turf. So I think the Americans do have a shot. If Tarnawa runs her best, she's the one to beat, but domestic spending probably is right up there with all the rest that we mentioned from Europe. Um, are you, do you want to say anything about Gufo? You know I love Gufo. I know you do, Brian, and and uh, and for good reason. And like you said, uh, that last race uh, was a little bit of a disappointing finish for uh, the the fans of that Christophe Clement uh, runner. But like you said, uh, the way the pace was setting up. Uh, before the race, the way it looked, the way the race was being run. Um, they tried to keep Gufo closer because uh, making that deep uh, run was probably not going to work. And, and I think it took, uh, it took Gufo out of his game. Yeah, I agree with you. I think it took him out of his game. I think he's a live long shot because now he'll be 15 to one in this Breeders' Cup turf. And remember, he's never finished out of the money in 13 lifetime starts, all of them on the grass for trainer Christophe Clement. One more thing about this Breeders' Cup turf, Matt, Chad Brown is just on a ridiculous tear oh. the last, I don't know, two, three weeks now. Chad Brown um, is red hot and uh, he could take that uh, uh, form, his red hot form into uh, the Breeders' Cup for sure. So domestic spending with a big shot there. Let's go to the uh, Breeders' Cup mile, Matt. Um, the Breeders' Cup mile, I, I, I'm going to, you know, go a little bit uh, uh, the opposite of what I did in the Breeders' Cup turf, because I think the Breeders' Cup mile, the Americans have probably, if you put that gun to my head, I would say I like the Americans in the Breeders' Cup mile. And, and it starts with Mo Forza, Matt, uh, Mo Forza has won eight of his last nine races. And fair enough, Brian, that uh, statement that you made about the Americans maybe having the advantage in the Breeders' Cup mile. And, and historically, that has been the case, uh, my friend. Uh, the Americans have won eight of the last 10 Breeders' Cup miles, although the two that the um, Europeans have won have been recently. The Europeans have won two out of the last three. But out of these turf races that we're going to talk about today, I think the mile suits the Americans better because it tends to be a race where speed can be a little bit more important. And, and let's face it, American racing um, is much more about speed 
than uh, the Europeans. So um, uh, yeah, I agree. The Americans have a much better shot in here. You, you brought up Mo Forza and wow, you know, uh, uh, he is just in fantastic form. Um, three triple digit buyer speed figures in his uh, last three races, uh, uh, four grade two victories in a row. Um, and, and that includes the City of Hope at Santa Anita and the Del Mar Mile for uh, trainer Peter Miller, who has done some good things in turf races uh, in recent history in the Breeders' Cup. Right. I agree with everything you said there, Matt. And, and especially at California, I think this is a race where we have some really good California milers like Mo Forza. Uh, Mo Forza, Matt, if you look at his record, I, I said eight of, eight of his last nine, he's won, the son of Uncle Mo. Uh, but he's also eight for eight in, in that streak out in California, running in races from about a mile to, to nine furlongs. A, a horse who has tactical speed, but a horse who has a really strong finish as well. He just knows his way. Mo knows his way to the wire. Mo fours at eight straight wins on the California turf. So I think he's the horse to beat here in this $2 million Breeders' Cup mile. And the horse he's been beating, uh, not by much, but he's been beating of late. He beat him in the last two, at least, his smooth like straight. And you know, it's hard not to like smooth like straight. I guess I guess he's lost four four out of his last five or something like that. But he just tries every time. He's always right there. He's always running against good horses like Mo Forza and domestic spending. Uh, when he gets uh, just a little bit of breather on the lead, he wins like he did impressively in this grade one shoe, shoemaker mile earlier this year. The son of Midnight Loot is just a nice horse. And if they leave him alone at all on the lead in this Breeders' Cup mile, I think he also representing California is a big threat uh, in the Breeders' Cup mile. Yeah, a hard knocker for uh, trainer Michael McCarthy. Um, <clears throat> and he too has uh, three really good speed figures um, uh, in, in recent races. Uh, you mentioned uh, having to battle Mo Forza in a number of those starts. Uh, interesting horse like fast and like you said brian if he is able to relax just a little bit on the lead he's dangerous and and, and he's dangerous to be a, a trifecta exacta finisher regardless yeah and last year at this time matt we were talking about a horse called ivor who was a south american from palo lobo i think we need to do that again this year Ivor probably wasn't real lucky in the Breeders' Cup mile uh, last year, but he has a horse who might be in even better form this year. In Love. Uh, in Love is a, a Brazilian bred with a Japanese sire. He's a grandson of one of my favorites, Sunday Silence, Matt. Uh, in Love has looked really good in his last two races for Paulo Lobo in Kentucky, both at Kentucky Downs and last time at Keeneland in, in a grade one mile there. Yeah, Brian, and if I'm not mistaken, you mentioned Sunday Silence. He was a big, uh, a big influential sire over in uh, in Japan, and as you mentioned, with uh, uh, this uh, uh, in this in love, who is a Brazilian bred. Please, fans, don't confuse him with the American by the same name in love, who uh, uh, is nowhere near this Brazilian. Two for two for trainer Paulo Lobo since he put blinkers on. So a big change. And that performance in the Keeneland Turf Mile was certainly noteworthy against a pretty strong field. Yeah, I, I bet him in there, Matt, because I saw the race at Kentucky Downs and I thought he was really good at Kentucky Downs. Clearly this horse is uh, in uh, career form right now. And off those races in Kentucky, I would have to give him a real shot here in the Breeders' Cup Mile. All right, Matt, let's, let's switch to the internationals a, a little bit. There's, uh, there's certainly some good ones that we expect for the Breeders' Cup mile, as always. Maybe it starts with Space Blues, who's Charlie Appleby, go Dolphin. He's, he's a five-year-old son of Dubawi, Matt, who's won 10 of 18 lifetime. But I think in his last two, he kind of separated himself uh, from some of his competition over in, in, in Europe. But I will warn people that he's been doing it at seven furlongs. Now that's that's a one furlong <laughs> distance from the one mile over here, but uh, uh, he'll have to prove he can get a mile, but with that kick, because that kick is is something to, to watch. Space Blues looks like maybe the biggest threat coming over from Europe. 
Yeah, and with that kick, you would get the feeling that the move from seven furlongs to a mile should be something that uh, that suits uh, Space Blues. Um, won two big races, won a group one at Longchamp recently, and before that, won a group two at York. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, Charlie Appleby's got an, a lot of awfully good horses, and, and uh, placing this... Uh, this horse at seven furlongs got him running against a, a different group of horses and maybe keeping him away from some of the, the milers that Charlie Appleby has. But again, he is in tremendous form and, and I think he's gonna like the mile on the, the Del Mar racetrack. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, a one mile in California, he should be able to uh, uh, carry that kick over to the mile, if you will at Del Mar. And, and I tell you what, of all of Appleby's good turf horses, this, this might be the biggest of them all as far as dangers, this one in the Breeders' Cup mile. Uh, a horse he beat uh, recently is a really nice mare. Her name is Pearls Galore. And, and I'd just like to throw in a couple of, of females in here again, strong females coming from Europe for the Breeders' Cup mile. Uh, Pearls Galore and Mother Earth have raced against each other. Pearl Scalora looks like she's, again, getting in really good form. She was second behind Space Blues over there in Longchamp. She's been first or second in her last four. Mother Earth, trainer Aiden O'Brien, a really classy three-year-old filly. Uh, she uh, locked horns with Pearl Scalora uh, a little while ago, and they, and they both look like they're pointing for the Breeders' Cup mile. And, of course, we'll remember uh, Mother Earth, Matt, because she ran a very good race in America last year when she was second in the Breeders' Cup juvenile turf uh phillies to phillies turf so uh mother earth uh, familiar with american racing pearls galore not but two talented females that we expect to see over here as well yeah and what you mentioned uh pearls galore's uh, uh record recently a couple of seconds the one to space uh, blues a second in a group one the, the matron uh in ireland at leopardstown and and before that a couple of group three victories. So uh, this is a quality Aiden O'Brien that's probably going to come with uh, pretty good odds. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see the odds in this race. I, I kind of think Mo Forge and Space Blues might be the two favorites, but uh, there'll be some very good betting options in the Breeders' Cup mile. The Breeders' Cup filly and Mare Turf, Matt, I'm not so sure about the, uh, I, I kind of wanted to start the Breeders' Cup turf with the Euros. I wanted to start the Breeders' Cup mile with the Americans. The Philly Mare Turf, I'm not so sure which way to start, but I have a feeling that the American in Bill Mott's barn might be the choice. Yeah, well, uh, we'll I'll get to war or uh, uh, war like goddess in a moment, um, but Europeans have won four out of the last five runnings of the Philly and Mare Turf. That win streak only broken up by, of course, Chad Brown, and that was with. Uh, sister uh charlie but we got some pretty darn good american fillies in this race you mentioned warlike goddess for bill mott who we know is a terrific trainer on both dirt and turf who has put together a very impressive winning streak four wins in a row this philly's got an explosive turn of foot brian which we saw most recently when she won the flower bowl a grade one in new york yeah she did that at saratoga matt and i think it's interesting here because mile three eights i'm not always sure that's what they'll be running the philly mare turf this year uh, at del mar it's not always the same distance from track to track at the breeders cup but i think a mile three eights often will kind of favor uh the europeans a little bit but not so with Warlike Goddess. Warlike Goddess wants distance. In fact, she's very familiar with uh, one extra furlong, 12 furlongs, but you're right. She, she just gobbles up her competition. Uh, she won her first of four straight graded stakes in a tough race earlier this year at Gulfstream Park. But since then, she has just uh, taken her competition to task with three blow, blow your doors off wins down the stretch. Uh, I guess she did that at Keeneland and two, two straight now at Saratoga for trainer Bill Mott, Hall of Fame trainer Bill Mott, Matt. She's won six of seven lifetime. Uh, obviously, she's really good right now. She didn't race much uh, in her three-year-old year, but she is a turf horse, a daughter of English Channel, who's just gotten 
so good that I, I expect her to be the favorite. Uh, you know, she did it again in the flower ball. Mile three eights will be right up her alley. You mentioned Chad Brown and, and maybe the second most interesting horse in America, although she's, of course, a European import. She's an Irish bred. Her name is Shanti Sarah. Shanti Sarah, I don't know. She raced just last week at, at Keeneland. So it's a question whether Chad Brown will bring this streaking three-year-old filly back to the Breeders' Cup. But off her recent form, I think I think he really should. I, I agree with you, Brian. And you you had mentioned that uh, Chad Brown is so red hot right now, and and Chanta Sarah is, is one of those horses that has been uh, part of this uh, uh, hot streak for Chad. You got to we got to keep in mind that Chad has won this race four times in the past, including Sister Charlie, who I mentioned earlier. Um, uh, Shanta Sarah is, is uh, the winner of that QE2 Invitational uh, last time, and and before that was the winner of the Jockey Club Oaks um, in New York, three in a row. Uh, and Chad has been so hot; he hasn't only been win winning the races; he's been finishing one, two in all of those races. Yeah, and and I, and I think you mentioned four to five Europeans in this race. Uh, but I remember Stephanie's kitten not all that long ago. That was probably six years ago. So uh, Chad Brown's won a couple of these recently as well. Shawnee Sarah, I, I think she began her American career at Monmouth in the Boiling Springs. And, you know, it was a, a slower pace. And maybe she had a little chalky to be second there. But she has literally gotten better with each start in America, starting with that Boiling Springs. Then she went out to Chicago, won the pucker up nicely with a rally. Then she proved she can go longer in winning that Jockey Club Oaks uh, uh, at Belmont Park, beating a good field of three-year-old fillies there. And then the QE2 was just pure domination. She uh, just ran right by her stable made a nice graded stakes winning stable made technical analysis in that QE2 at nine furlongs. Brown doesn't like to run horses three weeks back, but Shanti Sarah is going so well right now. She is a big threat if she is in the Breeders' Cup Philly and Turf yet to be determined. Matt, we haven't really talked about uh, the Japanese contingent yet here, and there will be several. Uh, last I heard, there were six horses from Japan planning to come over for different races, dirt and turf, for the Breeders' Cup. But I think we need to talk about Love's Only You because Love's Only You is not only one of the top turf horses in Japan, one of the top females in Japan, but she's her last three races are, uh, have come at, in different countries. She's run in Hong Kong, she's run in Japan, of course, and she's run at Dubai. She's running against males. She's doing really well. Love's Only You is a, a serious horse coming over from Japan for the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf. Yeah, no doubt. And Brian, sometimes when the Japanese horses come over and run in America, whether it's on the turf or the dirt, I, I have to question their class and how they fit in with the Americans and, and certainly against other U Europeans. But as you mentioned, this one in particular um, has established herself as a classy runner that fits in with the best. Um, she won the, the QE2, not that one in Ke Keeneland, Brian, that you just mentioned, but the QE2, a group one that was run at Sha Tin um, in Hong Kong, the premier uh, race course um, in, in Hong Kong. And you mentioned Dubai, where she finished second to Mishrif, one of the best turf runners around. Yeah, yeah, she's proven it. She's proven it in different countries. She's proven it at different distances. She's proven it against males. Love, Love's Only You might be the toughest international competition in this Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf. Matt, she's also a granddaughter of Sunday Silence. I just want to point that out as well. She's a daughter of deep, the great deep impact as well. We haven't even talked about the defending champ yet, Matt. Uh, Adaria was a bit of a long shot last year. She was like 17 to one when she ran by rushing ball at Keeneland, a bit of a surprise. Uh, you know, she's, uh, she's a five-year-old now and she hasn't won this year, but on the other hand, I'm looking at her form and there's not a whole lot to say, well, she's not the same Philly she was last year when she won. Uh, yeah, I don't know, Brian. We, we talked about some Europeans earlier who haven't won a race but have been running well in big races. We got to say that about, uh, about this horse, Brian, was fourth in that uh, uh, 
uh, in that French Derby, the, the pre de opera, um, second in another group one at, at Dovi in France, second in the Prince of Wales is uh, another premier group one. So, um, you know, no, not the winner's circle, but those were all good performances. They're all good performances showing that she's pretty consistent, even though she's over four this year, she's still pretty consistent. She's running against top-notch competition, as you said. And last year she got a nice trip. She was close enough where she could just grind down, rushing fall on the stretch. She's a threat this year. She's, she's already proven she could come over here and do it. Another horse who's proven that she can come over here and do it, or at least come really close to doing it, is Thundering Nights, Matt. Uh, not Aiden O'Brien, Joseph O'Brien trains this one. And uh, when we saw her in America, I thought she ran a really good race at Belmont Park running against Mean Mary. Yeah, and that was in the uh, in the New York uh, uh, grade two at Belmont Park. And uh, uh, Joseph O'Brien can't can't take him for granted. Obviously, he's got the pedigree uh, uh, being in the O'Brien family and was a very nice rider. Uh, also, uh, big races uh, until uh his, uh, you know, he he's pretty tall for a jockey and weight got to be an issue. He sent one over earlier in the year uh, to win a big race uh, uh, in in New York at some pretty hefty odds. Another one uh, with some losses in a row, but in uh, very good races, won a group one at the Kerr back in June. And, and you hear that? That's enough to know that this is a good horse. Yeah, and she beat a really good horse uh, in there as well uh, in the Pretty Polly, the Group One Pretty Polly, and her race in New York where she just missed against Mean Mary shows us she can come over and do well. Who, by the way, Matt, I, I forget who Joseph O'Brien's sire. You said he has a good pedigree. Who's his sire again? Uh, uh, he's sired by Aiden O'Brien. Sired by Aiden O'Brien. Good sire. Good sire for sure. <laughs> all right, so we're we're talking about so many great turf horses from all around the world. We don't get enough. We don't get a chance to talk enough about these international horses, but this was a fun show just because we did. It's, it's a really wonderful international mix here, talking about the Americans, talking about the Europeans, talking about some Japanese runners in these races. Uh, three huge turf races all on Saturday, November 6th at Del Mar. We're just two and a half weeks away, Matt. I'm, I'm getting excited. I'm starting to write down bets, probably too early, but I'm starting to write down bets of horses I really like in here in these races. So uh, it's, it's, it's just about that time for Christmas for us horse racing lovers. Matt, can I get a parting shot from you, my friend? Sure. I also want to recommend to uh, the, the uh, viewers of Horse Center that you and I both uh, this week have articles up on Horse Racing Nation about uh, uh, um, Breeders' Cup races where there's going to be some big, uh, big favorites and, and some of those races where we think the favorites might be vulnerable. So you folks should check that out. Uh, stay with us uh, over the next couple of weeks for our continued coverage of the Breeders' Cup. And of course, I want to thank our producer, Ben Wilkie, for putting together the show. I hope you fans are all enjoying the uh, new touches that Ben has put into the show. Yeah, thanks to Ben. Thanks for all of you watching. Uh, subscribe, 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 subscribe. You, you need to subscribe to Horse Center and turn on those notifications so you don't miss any of these Breeders' Cup shows that we do. We love having you every week. Thanks to our sponsor, the best contest site out there, Derby Wars. Folks, we'll be back next week with another big Breeders' Cup preview show.